All right, welcome back guys. In this video, we are starting to talk about pure bending and pure bending is what the middle of this beam between the two reactions here uh, is uh, is going to be undergoing. So if we load a beam like this that's symmetrical with these uh, equal loads on each end, then we're gonna get a free body diagram that looks like this where each of the reactions obviously has to be uh, equal and opposite P here, and it's all symmetrical. So when we draw the free body diagram, and let's say if we started at the left-hand side, when we, uh, when we have shear in this section here from the end of the beam to the first reaction, but once we pass uh, this reaction here, we're not going to be having any more shear here because if we were to draw uh, whoops, our free body diagram, we would have P pressing up, somewhere over here we'd have P pressing down and then for our shear force V it would just uh, shear would be equal to zero so that's true for this whole section in here so as far as the beam is concerned all the middle section of the beam sees is just applied moments uh, and they would be going like this because these force couples basically just exert an, uh, an applied moment on the middle section just like that and for all the middle section knows that's what's going on now if we have applied moments like this, uh, if we were to draw uh, a little free body diagram with a virtual cut in it uh, coming from the left hand side, we would have our applied moment and then we would need an internal moment uh, going like that to cancel that out. And if you remember from statics, this is the positive sense for an internal moment. Uh, so that would be positive or if we drew it from the other side where we took that cut um, where we have a moment like that. When we have a moment on the left hand side going clockwise, that was also the positive sense for our moments. And so when we have moments like this, that when we apply them, you imagine if you grab a ruler or something and you apply moments like that, it's going to sag down in the middle or the concave side will be on the top. Um, we call that a positive moment because it's giving us that positive internal moment. If we had the, the applied moments going down like this in the opposite direction, uh, we would be getting a negative internal moment. So if we define the, the section here, the, the section that is in pure bending uh, to have a length of L, then we know it's kind of obvious like that with, when we talked about using uh, bending a ruler, you know that it's going to want to have the tendency to bend down like this. So really after we apply these moments, we're getting a, a final shape that looks something like this. But if we bend a, an object with actual depth like this, uh, the top of this, this you can see actually that this line here is, is shorter than this line. And basically what we've done is we've taken an original length of L and the top has compressed a little bit and the bottom has stretched out a little bit to get this final shape. Now if the top is shorter and the bottom is, is longer, that means that somewhere in the middle there has to be the exact um, length of L. And it turns out that for a uh, it turns out for that a uh, for a rectangle if this is a, a beam with a rectangular cross section that it has that line is right in the middle so for a rectangle like I said it's exactly in the middle halfway from the top halfway from the bottom but if we have different shapes that aren't symmetrical uh, we can get the neutral axis appearing either close you know closer to one end or closer to the other end but it doesn't matter exactly what the cross section is whether it's a square or a trapezoid or a T shape or an I shape if we're applying a moment like this so that we get a positive internal moment, then where, no matter where the neutral axis falls, if it's exactly halfway or if it's closer to one end or closer to the other, above the neutral axis we're going to be getting uh, compression and below the neutral axis we're going to be getting tension. And this is because this the the top half of the member or the top part of the member here is is really is compressing. It's getting shorter. So we're finishing here with uh, with lengths less than L. And down here it's elongating. So we're getting lengths that are greater than L. Now, if we had the uh, a negative internal moment, then this would be flipped. We would have tension on the top and compression on the bottom. But compression and tension are, are really measurements of, uh, of force or stress, and we're talking about changes in length. So if you think about what the, the expression for strain is, uh, we have the, the displacement over the original length. Now, if you recall, we're talking, we call this positive if it was in tension and negative if it was in compression. But really, what we, want, what we want to do is we want to relate this into the force or the stress so we can actually confirm that, yeah, we're getting compression and tension. So we have Hooke's law, which was uh, the, in the normal axial stress is equal to the modulus of elasticity times the strain. So if we just rearrange that for strain, 
we get uh, that's equal to stress over E. And stress, if you remember, is just a measurement of force over area. So we're getting P over A E basically. So by applying these moments on the end, we're actually creating strain by changing the deformations here by either shortening the member or lengthening the member. And when we do that, we induce an internal stress. So basically all you need to take from this is that when we have a positive internal moment caused by applied moments like this, uh, that the normal stress and strain are going to be compressive above the neutral axis and tensile below the neutral axis.